Okay, could I invite those leaving the public gallery to do so as quickly and as quietly as possible as um, business is still in session and the next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 3064 in the name of Christine Graham on Men Don't Talk. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I would invite members who wish to participate to press the request to speak buttons uh, now or as soon as possible. And I call on Christine Graham to open the debate for around seven minutes. Uh, Ms. Graham. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy President Officer. I thank you for the pause to allow members to come in. It is with great pleasure that I lead my debate on men's sheds. It is not the first time, I would add, having spoken in 2019 in a previous debate I led, and I also contributed again in 2021. I thank members for signing the motion and in advance for contributing today. I also welcome to the gallery members of the Peebles and also the Pennycooks men's sheds in my constituency. Both of these I had visited pre-COVID and would hope to do so again. There are also sheds in Lauder and Gala Shields. All sheds have much in common with a wide range of experience in the members, which is very handy with the accountant who can search out funding streams. If you're lucky, a retired lawyer, not many people say that about lawyers, who can help with the legal stuff and men with trade experience who collectively make a powerful functioning organisation. But first that name shed is so apt to be chosen. I recall my father had one in his own one-man shed plonked right in the middle of the back garden. There he would retreat from our large and noisy family with the Sunday papers and sit in the open doorway at peace with the world. Or he would disappear within to make sledges for us that were so heavy they wouldn't move through the snow and there were the shelves constructed to survive an earthquake. Woodworking was not a talent of his, but he was happy. So when men's sheds came on the scene, I immediately recognised the benefits. The play Men Don't Talk by Claire Prenton was born out of discussions with people's men's shed members, and it prompted me yet again to highlight the importance of men's sheds. Their men do talk, and the play explores what they talk about, a whole range of issues, small, medium and large. And by large, I mean issues of loneliness, bereavement, dementia and so on. All of this while hammering away at bird boxes, planters, garden benches, mostly for community use, accompanied, of course, by the obligatory cups of tea, coffee and biscuits. Lest I forget, I should make it plain that People's Men's Shed also provides for women members. And Deputy Presiding Officer, I thank the Scottish Men's Sheds Association for their briefing and note that today there are 201 known sheds and developing groups across Scotland, 129 of them open, 47 in development and 25 proposed. The pandemic also meant that sheds, some sheds have gone, but post-pandemic there is an even greater need for them, as we can see from those I mentioned as proposed and in development. Incidentally, the Scottish Men's Sheds Association has an excellent website to guide those interested in the do's and the don'ts of establishing their shed. I now welcome more people to the gallery. You missed a bit, but you can see it online later. And there's no dispute that men's sheds do a power of good. And I'm not just talking about bird boxes and benches. The companionship is good for body and soul, much needed, especially after the last two dreadful years. And Deputy Presiding Officer, I know you want you would have taken part in this debate. So I thought I would say at the outset what you would have said. Besides, I have family connections to Orkney through a sister, which I think gives me sufficient authority to deputise for you. So I'm deputising for the deputy. How nice. Here's the, here's the gist of what you told me. Orkney's men shed, like others, found securing premises difficult. But having at last found a central location in Finston, midway between Stromness and Kirkwall, and thus central and ideal, has now had to relocate to Stromness itself. A hard-working team of volunteers, led by Morgan Harkis, has quickly enabled Orkney Men's Shed to prove its worth, both to members and the wider community. The concept is making its way north of the Galt, with plans for the Sandy Men's Shed well advanced. Given the risks of isolation and poor mental health, there is no reason at all why this model couldn't be replicated on other islands 
albeit tailored to meet the circumstances, demand and personalities in each community. I trust if I run out of time, I'll get a little bit more now for that. However, Minister, and the Minister will know where I'm going with this, funding for sheds has to be raised through the big lottery and so on. And it's time consuming and exhausting and finding suitable premises is a common challenge and not just in Orkney. This was true in Peebles, which secured premises in the former ex-servicemen's club in Pennycook, which has just secured a place in the YMCA after years. But local authorities can and often do help with this. Now, the Scottish Government is quite right to face up to the challenges of the population's health and well-being, especially of older people. Keeping folk fit in body and mind is not only the right thing to do, but actually can save more than pennies for the public purse, especially the health budget. Seems to me, I'm glad you're listening, Minister, seems to me, therefore, that there is a requirement for a more proactive role for government in supporting the men's shed movement. And I'm aware that there was a meeting with SMSA earlier to discuss a new funding strategy for men's sheds. It was looking at a trilateral funding approach within the budgets of yourself, the Minister of Equalities and Older People, and the Minister for Mental Wellbeing and Social Care. Now, I do understand that the Minister has responded to requests for three-year funding. Now, I appreciate the Scottish Men's Said Association is disappointed to receive only one-year funding, but I have to say these are very extraordinary times with severe financial pressures on all budgets. As my mother used to say, it's better get something than nothing. And I note that the Minister has also suggested that the Men's Shed Association apply for funding to explore the upcoming Social Isolation and Loneliness Fund. And I would encourage them to do this. And if I have allowed, I'll be back again in a year's time with another Men's Shed debate and looking to see that there's more funding secured for this very important organisation and for all the individuals who give up their time and, and have Men's Sheds developing throughout Scotland. And I'm glad you're listening, Minister. Thank you very much, and I hope the Deputy Presiding Officer is also happy. Thank you very much indeed, Ms Graham. Always a pleasure to be able to put words in your mouth. Um, I, I can advise the Chamber there is, um, quite understandably, a lot of demand to speak in this debate. I'm also conscious that business resumes um, after lunch at 2pm. We don't, therefore, have an awful lot of time, so I'd be grateful if you could stick to the uh, four-minute allocations. And with that, uh, I invite Audrey Nicholl to be followed by Miles Brigg. Up to four minutes. Thanks very much, uh, Presiding Officer. And I wish to thank Christine Graham for bringing forward this important motion uh, that really eloquently describes the commitment behind creating the one app play Men Don't Talk, the storyline development, the issues it explores, the funding support, all helping to create an opportunity to raise awareness of mental health and the vital role uh, of men's sheds in many of Scotland's communities. And what struck me about the motion is a really creative and positive relationship between the people's men's shed, playwright Claire Prenton, the Inspiring Life E.V. Douglas Memorial Fund, and the Eastgate Theatre in Peebles that clearly brought significant positive benefits to everyone involved in the project. Now, Age Scotland describes men's sheds as a safe social space for all men with time on their hands to come together to socialise and to undertake purposeful activities for themselves and their community. Sheds aim to provide positive views of ageing and later life, tackle loneliness and isolation, and help older men to be as well as they can be. I'm sure most, if not all, MSPs who've supported Christine's Graham motions, Christine Graham's motion will have a special relationship with men's sheds in their constituencies uh, and regions. And my constituency of Aberdeen South and North Kincardine hosts three sheds, and uh, I'll be dropping into them over the summer. And earlier this year, I spoke about the Portlethen Men's Shed in a speech about veterans and mental health and well-being. Uh, and Cliff and John, both shedders and both veterans, are testimony to the role the shed plays in helping them access their social network of friends. 
And recently, uh, my colleague Jackie Dunbrar brought uh, a motion uh, forward celebrating Global, Inter Global Intergenerational Week, in which I spoke about the work of One Shedder, who has created doodle boards for a local primary school, uh, putting his practical skills to very good use, recycling materials, wood and so on, and supporting children learn while developing their sensory practice. But the reach of this particular shed is much wider, as evidenced by the dementia-friendly garden they maintain, the planters they have made for their local railway station, the benches they are currently making, out of mahogany no less, to be placed outside the local chemists for older people waiting for their prescriptions. All activities enabling men to come together with their peers, neighbours and even strangers and talk. But of course, the context of today's debate addresses the scenario of not so much men don't talk, maybe also men don't want to talk or don't feel able to talk. A recent American study on the role of men's sheds in health promotion for older men highlighted the importance of an informal, male-friendly and safe shed environment that helps them to open up and talk about health issues in a comfortable and secure way. And by, secure, by sharing their individual health and illness experiences with their peer group, men gain social support, which helps them deal with their health issues, and in particular, their mental health. And I have it on good authority uh, that my friends at the Port Lethen Men's Shed are more than happy to talk quite frequently about their uh, waterworks, the number of times they go to the loo in the evening, uh, and also which treatment works best. Wonderful stuff. But the study also suggests that a successful men's shed must be supported by the availability of good shed facilities. And as Christine Graham highlighted, sufficient funding uh, and a management arrangement driven by shedders that enables them to make their own decisions, for example, which project, projects they want to work on. So to conclude, Presiding Officer, I thank Christine Graham for bringing this motion forward today, and I look forward to visiting Port Lethen, Cove and Daltons, and Cooterin District Men's Sheds during recess for a bit of summer talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms Nicholl. I now call on Miles Briggs to be followed by David Torrance again up to four minutes. Mr. Thank Briggs. you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I welcome um, Christine Graham's guests to the public gallery as well and thank her uh, for bringing and securing this debate this afternoon and the opportunity it's now given Parliament to discuss Men's Health Week as well and Claire Preston's play Men Don't Talk and the work of men's sheds in general across Scotland. And as Christine Graham has already outlined, Claire Prenton produced the one-act play Men Don't Talk after conducting a number of workshops in men's sheds and groups in Peebles. And the work of uh, the film, I think, really does show the huge uh, benefit of men's sheds, and that's something I hope um, we can all acknowledge today. Um, men, shed, um, men Don't Talk highlighted the work that men's sheds, such as Peebles and District Men's Shed, do in helping dis dispel the myth that men do not talk. Rather, men talk in a place and at a time when they feel comfortable to do so, which is why men's sheds and other community projects are so essential to all our communities. And this debate is taking place, indeed, during Men's Health Week uh, this week, which is working to raise, a hel raise awareness of health problems that disproportionately affect men. Men's shed organisations across the country are indeed a vital support and, and source of friendship, relief and comfort to many and provide that strong support network which often men feel, especially in today's technologically driven world, um, they are not necessarily connected to. And I think that is important that human contact is really uh, looked at as well. They provide an excellent opportunity to act early as well in the work which needs to take place to help address people's uh, depression, relationship breakdown, male suicide, particularly from men in Scotland from the poorest social backgrounds who are often the most vulnerable due to issues around unemployment and poor social conditions as well. And the figures surrounding mental health and suicide among men in Scotland are shocking. We've had many debates on this, and I really do think men's sheds do have a positive role to help play in that uh, jigsaw of how we find a solution. Because in Scotland today, more people, um, more young people under the age of 29 die by suicide than any other cancer, all cancers combined. In 2020, 71% of all suicides recorded were men, 
further illustrating the disproportionately high number of suicides amongst men in Scotland. In my own constituency here in Lothian, in 2016, between 2016 and 2020, over 500 people died from suicide, with 389, 70% of them, like the national average, being men. Now, I recently met with the Men's Sheds Association at their Bankery HQ to discuss the challenges facing uh, the charity and also the work which they potentially can do to help turn around some of these problems and really the role they need to play in helping us do that. And anyone who has interacted with a man's shed, men's shed will know just um, how their work is making such a huge impact um, on local men in their, each and every community and the model which actually is working so well in, in rural and urban uh, Scotland. Edinburgh the Lothians, um, which I represent, is fortunate that the number of men's sheds associations which are now operating in the area. Um, but we need to also work to how we can expand them even further. And I think that's an important part of what, what this debate can bring forward today. Um, and I think this also represents where members' uh, business can also drive change, which uh, the members managed to do, because I note uh, that the Minister responded yesterday uh, to the Men's Shed organisation with regards to funding, and that the Scottish Government will make available £75,000 of core funding. Now, as Christine Graham's outlined, that's fine in terms of staffing, uh, but we need to see that future commitment around support. And the three-year uh, funding request which was put forward and rejected. I hope this debate can help see uh, that revisited and that ministers will look towards a future sustainable financial uh, package which can be developed because um, that's hugely important that we see that if we're going to see uh, the sustainability around men's sheds but also their expansion. Um, with just under 3,000 individual members and a pre-COVID engagement of around 10,000 members across Scotland, the Scottish Men's Sheds Association is indeed the fastest and largest growing member-led men's health charity in Scotland. We should celebrate that. And it's vi vital, therefore, that we really look towards how they will be expanded. Um, to conclude, uh, Deputy President Officer, I'd like to thank Christine Graham and Claire for bringing to the attention the work of men's sheds to Parliament. And I think I'd close with... An important quote from another woman, and that is actress Glenn Close, that sums up the issue, I think, quite nicely. What mental health needs is more sunlight, more candour and more unashamed conversation. I sincerely hope that in the next year, when we celebrate the 10th anniversary of the first men's shed in Scotland and the pandemic hopefully being behind us, that we can tackle issues of men's health and well-being with more sunlight, more candour and more unashamed conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Biggs. I know it's not in keeping with members' debates to be too strict with time limits, but we are under the pump because of business starting at uh, two o'clock. So if you could stick to your four minutes, I'd be very grateful. Uh, David Torrance, uh, to be followed by Paul O'Kay. Thank you, Mr. President, officer, and thank you to my colleague, Christine Graham, and securing this important debate in the Chamber today. We all, all know that most men don't talk as much as they should, but why don't they? In the past, men were encouraged to talk about their feelings. In fact, they were often actively discouraged from doing so. Over the years, men have been conditioned not to talk about their fears, emotions or feelings. I believe that two simple words have had that greatest detrimental effect on how comfortable men feel about make, talking about their problems and experiences. Man up. In terms of a phrase between that men should be strong, shouldn't show their feelings, shouldn't cry and are expected to get through their problems on their own. The words are often thrown around without any given to the damage it is inflicting, or just to the person on the receiving end, but to a wider society and future generations. Historically, men have been taught to hide their pain, physical and mental emotion, with society making it difficult for men to discuss topics of personal importance, fearing instead in personal matters such as sport or popular culture. It is encouraging to see that our younger generations appear to be more open to talking about mental health, thanks in part to the media presence that mental health now has and to social media, which can be a lifeline for those feeling isolated. I am reassured to see just how far things have progressed since I was a boy, but there still is much work to be done to challenge a cultural stereotype that exists in our society and to avoid the trap of toxic masculinity. St Startling research from the Men's Health Charity, Movember, finds that nearly a third of men say they feel, they feel pressure to be manly or masculine. To maintain the appearance of manliness, the research finds that 38 per cent of men do not talk to others about their feelings, and that almost three in ten men have never shown emotion or cried in front of others. The pressures to repress emotion can have devastating consequences on their mental health and may even stop some men from seeing a healthcare professional 
about physical or mental health problems. This inability or willingness to reach out to friends, family or health professionals can have devastating results. The statistics surrounding the issue of male suicide are truly heartbreaking to read. Figures from the National Records of Scotland show that one in four men have thought about taking their own life. In 2020, 71% of all suicides were men. And every year since 1985, more than 70% of people dying from suicide have been male. And 43% of men wish they could talk more about, to others about their personal problems. It can be a vicious cycle. Men don't talk about mental health because there's a stigma. But until more men talk about it, the stigma will remain. That is why organisations such as Men's Sheds are very important. They provide a safe and supportive environment that fosters discussion and encourages shoulder-to-shoulder chats. They cater for unique needs of men by recognising that many men find it difficult to discuss their own personal thoughts and feelings head-on. As I have mentioned in this chamber before, my constituency is the home of Kirkcaldy District Men's Shed. In fact, the last time I stood here highlighting their invaluable contribution to the local community, I was told that they had been a victim to a robbery with their equipment, tools and electrical generators were stolen, rendering them powerless. Well, I am delighted to report that not only have they recovered from that crime, but they have gone from strength to strength. The group has now secured and moved into their own premises, which has seen their membership increase greatly over recent months. Their community open day last month was also a great success, with a number of men coming along to find out more about what they do. And it was great to see that local reaction to national issues. Also in Kirkcaldy, there are a number of groups that address men's mental health, including Peace Man Chat Movement and Andy's Man Club, all of which are helping to reaffirm the message that it is OK to talk. In conclusion, President Officer, we must continue to challenge and change and empower our fathers, brothers, sons and friends so that they all their voices are heard and future generations of men and boys grow up feeling confident to talk about and express their emotions, asking for help when they need it and discussing the topics that they never dared to before. Because when men get together and start to talk about issues that really matter, the results can be astounding. Thank you, Mr Turnt. And I call Paul O'Kane to be followed by Rufus Maguire. Up to four minutes, Mr O'Kane. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I begin this afternoon by thanking Christine Graham for bringing this debate to the Chamber today. I am in no doubt from what we have heard today that the, the play Men Don't Talk by Claire Prenton goes a long way to dispelling the myths that persist in our society that men don't talk, and indeed the stigma that persists uh, about how men deal with their feelings. And I congratulate Claire on that important piece of work. I think to go into community and work hand in hand with a men's shed to inform the play can only mean that it gives uh, a piercing insight into the worries and angst of so many men. Uh, even if that does sometimes extend to discussing who is next to do the dreaded trip to the shops. Um, I agree uh, with Christine Graham that me uh, projects such as Men Don't Talk are an excellent example of community collaboration and play an important role in raising awareness in society uh, of those who may be less comfortable in engaging in conventional support. And I think if the performance does travel further north at some point in time, we would all be delighted to attend a showing, and perhaps that is something that we could do in this parliament indeed, in the future. Uh, in my own community, we are fortunate enough to have access to our own men's shed just down the road in Barhead, a community which the Minister knows well, and indeed the Minister and I have visited that, uh, that, that excellent facility. We have not yet been encouraged by the members to take up woodwork ourselves, although that may well happen in the future, although I am not entirely confident about my own abilities in that regard. Uh, but the community men's shed in Barhead does so much more than provide a space for crafting and woodwork. Now, as well as doing that, it provides a lifeline to many in our community, uh, older people, both men and women, uh, to come together uh, and share a space uh, with one another. The Men's Shed does amazing work, and there is so much I think we can all learn by their example of kindness and respect to all. And every time I have visited, I have felt that warmth, that kindness uh, and that real buzz that is around the place uh, with people coming together. Uh, I do not know if I have time to take an intervention. You would uh, have to take it in your oh, I, I will not, if that is OK, just uh, to keep on the right side of the Deputy Presiding Officer, of course. Uh, I, I want to just share with members a few quotes uh, which have come directly from members of the Shed in Barhead that I think uh, typifies really uh, what it means to them. Uh, one person said, it may just be a shed to you, but to me it is my sanctuary. Another said, the Men's Shed has been my lifesaver since my wife died. From these quotes, it is clear to me that we need to do as much as we can to provide support for these organisations, which for some people is indeed their lifeline. 
Uh, and as other members have said, I, 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 this isn't rocket science. It's a model that perhaps in some ways has always been around, but the difference it makes is huge. Uh, as Christine Graham said, I think we need to think about the preventative spend that, that it is uh, and that it creates, particularly the savings that it makes in terms of the health budget. Uh, we've already heard from other members the, the, the issues of funding and sustainability for men's sheds. Um, and I think sustainability of funding is crucial. Uh, and I know that is something that worries many people who are active in the men's shed movement. And we have heard some of the national issues that the, the men's shed association is experiencing. I do hope the minister will pick up on those in his concluding remarks. But I think there are also issues at the local level in receiving funding and support for lease of buildings that they occupy, with councils sometimes dragging heels when it comes to making decisions on uh, future support that they will provide. And something that I do think we need to explore further is um, the, the framework within the community the Empowerment Act on asset transfer. Uh, the Men's Shed and Barhead has raised the issues around the validation certificate and the length of time it can take to have that confirmed uh, and the kind of uncertainty that that creates in terms of applying to funders and being able to have that, uh, that sense of control, I think, over the building that they occupy. Very conscious of time, uh, presiding officer. So, so um, I do hope that the Minister might be able to respond to that or perhaps take up offline with me some of those issues. But in closing, I, I know the Scottish Men's Shed movement will celebrate its 10th year since the first ever Men's Shed opened in 2013 next year. Uh, and now a movement from Barhead to Ullapool uh, has gone from strength to strength across the country and should be celebrated. And I look forward to us all coming together next year uh, in this Parliament with perhaps even more guests from men's sheds across the country to celebrate that milestone. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr O'Kane. I'm sure if you can operate a kettle, you'll be very welcome in the Barhead uh, men's shed. I now call Ruth Maguire to be followed by Maggie, Maggie Chapman. Presiding officer, I would like to thank Christine Graham for bringing this important topic to the Chamber and highlighting the positive impact of men's sheds. I would also like to welcome the shedders who are in the gallery and congratulate Claire Prenton, Inspire Life and the gentlemen of Peebles and Districts Men's Shed who collaborated to create and produce Men Don't Talk. Presiding officer, according to Scottish Men's Sheds Association, there are 127 established men's sheds in Scotland, three of which are in my constituency. Three Towns Men's Shed, Irvine Harbourside Men's Shed and Irvine Newtown Men's Shed, who in September 2019, along with Garnet Valley Men's Shed, created the Ayrshire Men's Shed Network. A man's shed might conjure up the image of a lone man making or mending items by ha hand, content away from the family, as Christine Graham described, at the bottom of the garden. But what we're talking about today is a wee bit different. Men's sheds are about social connections, friendship building, sharing skills and knowledge, banter and, of course, a biscuit or two. Now, we all know that men's health can be overlooked, with men being more predisposed to physical illness and injury, on top of being vastly more susceptible to mental health problems and suicide than women. It is often reported that men are less likely to access professional interventions. Men's sheds raise awareness, encourage shedders to look after themselves and to seek help where needed. The Three Towns Men's Shed, in conjunction with other organisations, coordinated a very successful men's wellbeing event, which featured the Prostate Scotland Virtual Toolbox Workshop to raise awareness of prostate disease. The Scottish Shedder, the official free magazine of the Scottish Men's Sheds Association, not only promotes news from men's sheds across Scotland to showcase their successes, but includes a health section which promotes topics from first aid to the benefits of physical activity and support services. It also includes personal stories from men on how becoming a member of their local shed helped turn their lives around. With an increase to online activities and the use of social media, one particular area of concern is social isolation and loneliness. As I am sure we can all understand, this was exacerbated during lockdown with limited social interactions and community spaces closed. Organisations such as Age Scotland herald men's sheds for offering opportunities to interact meaningfully with others. What is more, many sheds get involved in community projects, restoring village features, helping maintain parks and green spaces, and building things for schools, libraries and individuals in need. At the end of last year, Irvine Harbourside's men's shed were made aware of a young apprentice joiner in the town who did not have tools. They quickly stepped in by gifting him a tool bag and basic toolkit to get him started. They also recently made planters and a bookshelf for the Puffer Cafe at the Scottish Maritime Museum in Irvine. The three town men's shed run evening classes, 
providing basic DIY skills, camera skills and painting and decorating advice, allowing members to share their own skill set with the wider community. An Irvin Newtown men's shed turns pallets donated by a local business into fabulous benches, decorations and planters for Dreghorn Library's garden. Presiding officer, men's sheds are vital. They're a community space for men to connect, converse and to create. They help reduce loneliness and isolation and take into consideration the differing male behaviours and attitudes towards men's physical and mental health. But, presiding officer, more importantly, um, they're fun. I wish them all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Maguire. And I call Maggie Chapman to be followed by Marie McNair. Up to four minutes, Ms. Chapman. Thank you, presiding officer. And I thank Christine Graham for lodging her motion and securing today's debate. The patriarchy doesn't just hurt women. The myth of masculinity, of what a 2013 study of men's sheds described as physical dominance, emotional control, and achievement through paid work completely fails to respect or acknowledge the reality of men's lives, men's emotions, men's relationships, needs and experiences. It is perhaps no coincidence that the men's shed movement originated in Australia, a repository of so many patriarchal fantasies, or that it has taken such root in Scotland, where we are, I hope beginning to recognise that we, we all can, regardless of gender, indeed talk and feel and cry. I am fortunate as an MSP for the North East region to represent the members of many wonderful men's sheds. We have men's and community sheds in our cities, from Lochie in Dundee to Bridge of Don in Aberdeen, in towns across Aberdeenshire and Angus, from Bankry to Brecon, Fraserburgh to Forfa, and in many village and rural communities. Some bring together the city and countryside, like the Cast of Gowrie Men's Shed, which meets in Dundee's Technology Park. Whatever their setting, men's sheds fulfil the same core functions, providing a place for people to meet, to talk, to share, to share skills, projects and ideas, and to be active in the company of others. Some, such as West Hill, host talks by experts in local history and health issues, while Inverurie has a music group. The connections between activity, social relationships and good physical and mental health are well established and men's sheds play a vital role in supporting their members' well-being in body, mind and spirit. But men's sheds don't only benefit their own members, they provide huge benefits to their local communities, as analysed by the Gable Endies Men's Shed in Montrose, and to the wider world. Many of the concepts that we discuss in this Parliament, the changes that we want to see happen, men's sheds are already doing, quietly, practically and wisely. Reuse, repair and recycle isn't an aspiration for the men it isn't just an aspiration for the men's sheds of the North East. It's a daily reality. Across the region, tools, machines and furniture are rescued, refurbished, returned to active use and love. At Peterhead's men's shed, they, they, they even re refit boats, while Ferry Hill is linked with the Railway Heritage Trust. And they meet community needs in immediate and practical ways. In Turriff, they built children's picnic tables and in Bamf and Macduff, a mud kitchen, both for local primary schools. That positive relationship with local schools is replicated in many communities, teaching and doing, woodworking, gardening and more. Men's sheds have long been addressing the crises of food insecurity and poverty. Ellen Men's Sheds, like many others, has a polytunnel and raised beds, while Afford produces vegetable and herb plants for sale. And men's sheds can address global needs as well. In Broughty Ferry, hand tools are collected, refurbished and shipped to Malawi, a vital resource for communities there. It is inspiring. But men, men's sheds themselves face challenges, as we've heard, both institutionally and to their individual members. COVID has had a deeply damaging effect on capacity, with many still waiting to resume their projects. Health issues, both physical and mental, the cost of living crisis and growing pension poverty limit many men's engagement with their local sheds. And there are challenges of inclusion, communities which could benefit from men's sheds, but where they are yet to reach. In reflecting on the wonderful achievements of men's sheds in the North East, across Scotland and the world, we should perhaps be asking ourselves how we here can do more. How can the decisions we make in this Parliament, prior, the prioritise we decide upon, the messages we send, 
support and extend the vital work of, mess, of, of men's sheds now and into the future. I look forward to continuing this discussion with colleagues over the rest of this session. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Chapman. I now call Marie McNair to be followed by Paul Sweeney, up to four minutes. Thank you, President Officer. It is a pleasure to speak in this debate, and I congratulate Christine Graham for securing it and giving the Parliament the opportunity to commend the positive contribution made by men's sheds and the wider community. I agree with Christine that men's sheds are a vital support in Scotland's communities, and I am pleased to have signed and support the motion in her name. As a member for Clybank and Mogai, I am pleased to advise Parliament that I have two men's sheds in my constituency, the men's shed in Clybank and the Mogai and Bed Bearsden shed in Bearsden. The Mogai and Bearsden shed is in the pagoda at the King George V Park in Bearsden, and an extensive search by initial trustees of the group identified the former tennis changing rooms, the pagoda, as a possible home for the shed. After a year of negotiations with Western Bartonshire, Council, they got to the keys for the derelict building in April 2018. And the building has been lovingly restored by the group and supported by a grant from East Dumbartonshire Health and Social Care Partnership. In Clybank, the sheds are form formal uh, school huts in the grounds of Dam Your Sea Centre. And the group has also recently managed to secure another hut from Western Bartonshire Council and are in the process of refurbishing this. It is great to see these derelict buildings being brought back into use. I have had the privilege of visiting both sheds and spent an enjoyable time listening to my constituents about why this resource plays an important part in their lives. Some of the men I spoke to told me that attending the men's shed gave them a purpose. It was also clear that they bring a tremendous gain to our local communities. I give particular thanks to Mick Wilson for hosting my visit in Clyde Bank and to Hamish Livingston at the Mogai and Bearsden shed. It was wonderful to meet them and the other men who were there. We had a great chat and it was a really enjoyable day. I came away clear about the good that these facilities are doing for my constituents, and this support was often there when they needed it most. Frequently as an antidote to social isolation and poor mental health. During the visit to both sheds, the men spoke about the mental and physical health benefits they got from attending. Some of the men had recently retired and had a lot of time on their hands compared to when they were working. Attending a shed helped reduce social isolation and gave them an opportunity to speak to other men and a chance to be creative. And, oh boy, they are creative. They have many trades. There's ex-joiners, painters, for example, and they can turn their hand to absolutely anything and do it effortlessly. COVID-19 placed such a strain on mental health and unfortunately increased social isolation. I admired how the men tried to keep in touch during this time, having made lasting friendships, recognising the importance of this contact even more. That is why the feeling of relief and happiness was obvious when they finally got to meet in the shed when the COVID-19 restrictions were eased. It was an honour to be invited to their reopening celebration in Clybank and pleased to show my support for their community endeavour. And their commitment to our community is widely recognised and highly valued. In both sheds, uh, they are very connected to the wider community. In Eastern Bartonshire, Bearsden and Mogai Shed, for example, have supported Mogai and Bloom with a follower arrangement outside the Fraser Centre, and they have also constructed an outside canopy for uh, Gavin Mill and also helped Bearsden and Bloom. In Clybank, they are also very active in their community, supporting local groups, in particular the local Patrick Food Parcels. And both organisations help each other in kind, so it really is a really great example of them being there for one another and the fostering of a community spirit. So, in conclusion, President Officer, I am pleased to take this opportunity to thank both men's sheds in my constituency. We are very fortunate to have two and have the highest praise for them, and I will be a very strong supporter as a constituency MSP. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms McNair. Before uh, calling the next speaker, I am conscious of the number of um, speakers who still want to contribute to the debate, so I am minded to accept a motion under Rule 8.14.3 to extend the debate by up to 30 minutes. And I invite Christine Graham to move such a motion. Move, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you. The question is that the debate be extended by up to 30 minutes. Are we all agreed? Excellent. Uh, with that, it's not an invitation to go beyond your four minutes, um, but uh, I call Paul Sweeney to be followed by Paul McLennan. Challenge accepted, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you very much. And it was a pleasure uh, to support the original motion lodged by the member from Midlothian South, Tweedale and Lauderdale. And I am delighted to see that her motion has achieved enough support for debate in the Chamber and congratulate her on that. And I'd also like to congratulate all those involved in producing Men's uh, Don't Talk and hope that the play in 
All those involved um, are rightly proud of their work and continue to enjoy much success in their endeavours in such a worthwhile endeavour. I am grateful to the, for the opportunity also to pay tribute to men's sheds across Scotland, but more specifically uh, in Glasgow, and particularly the Springburn men's shed in North Glasgow, um, which I have a close association with over recent years. They took over an abandoned Romney shed, a council depot in the park, uh, and was formally established as a men's shed in August 2018, led by the fantastic Tom Bennett. And it's since then has grown exponentially as a supportive environment for men in the local area as well as a wonderfully creative and generous community initiative. Springburn Men's Sheds are a wonderful example of the ideals and missions of the General Med Sheds project in Scotland to provide valuable services in the community and provide a means for men to share their skills and knowledge with others. They have worked brilliantly with local business to reuse material that is in excess to benefit the community, such as in the construction of new mental health wards at Stobhill Hospital, just half a mile away. Excess materials, surplus, even porta cabins were used to extend the men's sheds complex and built a community library and a tea station and kitchen facilities. It's really grown arms and legs thanks to uh, construction companies like BAM Constructions for supporting it in such a practical and meaningful way. And the men's shed has con con you know, contributed back using those investments by private businesses and by the council and other organisations to ensure that the community has positive impacts across all generations. Uh, the, the men's shedders regularly visit primary schools to install outdoor play equipment, mud kitchens, which I'm not quite sure what they are, but apparently they're very popular with children, uh, and offer also a handyman service on Mondays and Fridays, which is um, for the elderly environment, which is really important. It's actually booked up to August. And I think that's a real issue that we need to face in our communities. As statutory services are facing real financial pressure, council maintenance budgets being cut, garden maintenance being cut back, we're actually seeing an increasing reliance informally on this sort of goodwill being built up in communities. And whilst I deprecate cuts to public services, mm -hmm. I think we must also recognise the importance of community resilience. And the men's sheds are a fantastic example of where community goodwill can come to the fore and help to ensure that good, the people's well-being and lives in the community are, are sustained, particularly for those who are infirm and unable to um, you know, fully uh, maintain their own properties. They also provide fantastic and excellent one-off projects for great local causes, um, including building a Santa sleigh for a local children's hospice and also providing garden furniture to the Marie Curie Hospice at Stobhill Hospital. Um, all really well received and grateful for that work. And I think the points raised by members across the chamber about what the play meant, what men don't talk meant in essence, is about how men's mental health must be treated differently from, you know, particularly in, in an older generation. Purpose, fulfilment, satisfaction, self-esteem, companionship and friendship are the key attributes I think are so important about men's sheds. And I think that has to be also understood in the context of our wider mental health and care strategies in Scotland. We have a tendency to over-medicalise things, but we also must recognise that these softer approaches and you know, normalisation of this approach is so critical to cost avoidance elsewhere in our public services, particularly in the National Health Service. And I hope the Minister will take on board that opportunity for cost avoidance and the opportunity cost and thinking about how actually the precarious funding that men's sheds often face is not necessarily helpful and that there can be a virtuous cycle instead of a vicious cycle in how we approach the funding of these great community assets, not just in maintaining our properties, ensuring resilience in our communities, but also fundamentally ensuring a resilient generation builds that connections across generations with young people, builds those skills and ensures we have a much more robust and resilient community across Scotland. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Sweeney. And I call Paul McLennan to be followed by Alexander Burnett. Up to four minutes. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. Can I thank Christine Graham for bringing forward this debate this afternoon? Last night I hosted the Scottish Mental Health Partnership where they launched a paper on the forthcoming Scottish Mental Health Strategy Refresh. Last week I held a similar event with the Scottish Social Prescribing Network looking at the role of link workers and other professionals in that sector. What was apparent in both events was discussions around about how to engage with men who sometimes find it difficult to talk. In regards to men's sheds, there are a number of sheds in, in East Lothian and Dunbar, East Linton, McMerry, North Berwick and in Harrington. I think it has been mentioned before there are just around about 10,000 shedders in Scotland across all our local authorities. Now, I had a look at the men's shed web page and it states men's sheds responds to men's needs for camaraderie and provide opportunities to work together in a way that contributes meaning to their life and their communities. Scotland's men's sheds also partner with uh, other organisations. The Scottish Men's Sheds Association teamed up with Scotland this week to offer Scottish Men's Sheds a promotional opportunity during men, uh, Men's Health Week. 
uh, and 35 Scott Mid stores. Um, they offered a full day exhibition space to uh, accommodate six foot table and up to two shed representatives, and that has been ongoing this week. Moray based professional theatre company Right Lines Productions will also be partnering with Edinburgh Festival Fringe this August as part of the Pleasance Theatre Trust's Edinburgh National Partnerships Programme. It has a brand new production which will debut at the Edinburgh Festival Fringe this August, and it is called Manshed. They preface the show with the following. How does a man find his purpose when he grows old and major life events come thick and fast? Should he retire to the solitude of the shed as usual and escape from the world, or get out and try something new? When the familiar rules no longer apply, is it too late to change the habits of a lifetime? It is described as such. Men Shed is a bittersweet one-man theatre piece which explores the joy of sheds, the pain of loss and the comfort of friendship. This play has been inspired by men's sheds around the world, but more specifically around about the work by the Scottish Men's Sheds Association. The run is in the Pleasant Theatre uh, this month uh, on August, and it runs right through the month. So, try and encourage members to go and see that if they possibly can. Presenting officer, another fantastic organisation that helps with men's health uh, is Andy's Man Club. Andy's Man Club are a men, men's mental health health charity, offering free to attend talking groups for men and challenging the stigmas around about male mental health. Andy's Man Club was set up by Luke Amber after the tragic loss of his brother-in-law, Andy, in 2016. He and Andy's mum, Elaine, wanted to prevent other families from going through what they had gone through. The idea was to stop families going through this uh, just to help other guys. The, Andy's, uh, the idea of Andy's Man Club was born at that stage. Last week, I watched a group of men from Andy's Man Club take part in the Dunbar Civic Week Parade under the banner of Andy's Man Club. I was humbled to attend one of their meetings, where, as men, we all talked about openly talked about our mental health issues. There are still stigmas associated with men's mental health. These stigmas are seen as weakness, burden and embarrassment are what stop men from speaking out. Men's Sheds and Andy's Man Club are helping pave the way for men to know that it is OK to talk. Presiding officer, it takes strength and courage to open up about your struggles. Man's Shed and Andy's Man Club do an amazing job in helping men know what they can do to talk to someone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kenny. I now call the final speaker in the open debate, Alexander Burnett, for up to four minutes. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I thank Christine Graham for securing this debate. Uh, I'm very supportive of the men's sheds in my constituency, and just want to take this time to thank Jason Schroeder, Chief Executive and founder of the Men's Shed Movement, uh, who operates the Scottish Men's Shed Association uh, from an office in Bankery, which I'm delighted to personally support, uh, and I refer members to my register of interest. Uh, also, my constituency is West Hill and District Men's Shed. Uh, they were the first ever men's shed set up in Scotland in 2013. Uh, it now welcomes over 300 members, uh, and I want to recognise that it was voted Scottish Men's Shed of the Year in 2021 uh, and received a Queen's Award for voluntary service during the pandemic. For many, men's sheds are a life support, providing a space for men to engage with one another, overcoming challenges such as loneliness and the stigma around mental health. But sadly, since the pandemic, we have lost some sheds, and that is due to post-COVID fatigue of shed trustees and financial pressures. However, the pandemic has shown the real need for new healthy male places to socialise, with eight new shed groups requiring support in the last few months. But it's disappointing, therefore, to hear that men's sheds are not receiving the proper long-term support from the Scottish Government. And despite a positive meeting, uh, Scottish Men's Shed Association had with a minister back in February uh, who spoke of trilateral portfolio funding possibilities, uh, and, uh, but there have been no assurances of support despite being chased uh, until yesterday. Uh, and some may say cynically timed to give the minister something to say in today's debate. But the support we're just about to hear for is just £75,000, and this is only for one year and was just 17 per cent of what was requested, falling well short of the requirement to prevent a collapse of a shed's movement. And the Minister went so far as to tell the Scottish Men's Sheds Association to seek alternative funding next year. So I have only one question for the Minister. Was £25,000 each really the best that he, Christina McKelvey and Kevin Stewart could spare from their budgets? And will he today commit to supporting sheds beyond March next year? Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Burnett. I ask uh, the minister, I invite the minister now to respond to the debate. Uh, Mr. Arthur, for uh, up to seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. And can I begin by joining colleagues in congratulating and thanking Christine Graham 
for once again uh, bringing a debate on men's sheds to the Parliament. I can also join colleagues in welcoming shedders to the gallery and commending everyone involved in the Men Don't Talk play. Indeed, it is a te testament to the positive impact that men's sheds have on communities across Scotland that we are again debating, and I very much welcome this debate as an opportunity to demonstrate their positive impact on health and well-being, support for older people, especially men, but not exclusively men, and enabling resilient communities, as Paul Sweeney articulated. The original movement, as was highlighted by Maggie Chapman, started in Australia in the 1980s and was set up to improve men's health, a place where men could socialise and talk shoulder to shoulder. Today, there are over 900 sheds in Australia, with other countries adopting men's sheds worldwide. Here in Scotland, the movement started in 2009, and by 2013, we had our first five sheds. Today, that number, as the Chamber has already heard, is over 200. This is in no small part down to the vision of Jason Schroeder, who is the Chief Executive and founder of the Scottish Men's Sheds Association. He started the Men's Shed Movement in Scotland in 2009 after being inspired by a talk about men's sheds by Dr Neil Bruce, Chairman of New Zealand Men's Sheds. In 2014, Jason created the SMSA and the Scottish Government became involved in 2015. These early discussions led to Scottish Government funding the new SMSA in 2015-16 which helped establish and grow the movement. Our support played its part in enabling Jason to become the executive officer of the SMSA in 2016 and continue the growth of the organisation that touches on every corner of Scotland, with 2,899 members and 10,627 shedders and supporters. And Jason has played his highly commendable part in this growth, building the association into a team of four, with him as Chief Executive Officer, a Communications and Public Relations Officer, a Development Officer and an Administrator. We have continued to back the SMSA with sustained support, and earlier this week, in a backdrop of an exceptionally challenging financial environment, I wrote to Jason with an offer of core funding for 2022-23. That said, Presiding Officer, the SMSA must be able to adapt to the demands of a never increasing number of sheds and also to help sustain and keep existing sheds open. We are committed to helping Jason respond to these needs and to build a sustainable business model for the SMSA that can attract a wide range of funders and reduce dependency on Scottish Government support alone. For example, tapping into the upcoming Social Isolation and Loneliness Fund, an integral part of our programme for government commitment to invest £10 million over the next five years to tackle social isolation and loneliness across Scotland's communities. We recognise that men's sheds provide more than just a physical place for activities. We enable a space for people to talk to each other. For example, in Scotland there are men's sheds that have provided vital support to veterans who have missed comradeship and the sense of belonging. Challenges with mental health have touched every aspect of life in Scotland, and it has never been more important to continue talking about mental wellbeing. We must use such opportunities to prevent and address mental health issues with the same commitment, passion and drive as we do with physical health problems. Many mental health problems are preventable, and almost all are treatable. So people can either fully recover or manage their conditions successfully and live as healthy, happy and productive lives as possible. The range of activities found in men's sheds plays into this preventative health agenda. They also benefit their wider communities in a range of ways, such as making buddy benches for schools, as we were hearing about, or providing classes in operating tools or craft projects. I have still to take up, as Mr O'Kane has, the offer of these particular instructional opportunities in Barhead, but perhaps that is something we can do together. And in responding to uh, Mr O'Kane's uh, specific ask with regards to the community asset transfer um, process, I am more than happy to meet with the member to discuss in more detail. Yes, I am happy to. Alexander Burnett. 
Can I thank the Minister for that intervention? And he's uh, very eloquently uh, gone over all the benefits uh, that sheds provide. Uh, but he's also uh, finished talking about the funding piece, uh, and he hasn't committed to funding beyond March next year. Could I just ask him to revisit that question? Minister. Um, as the member knows, we have we've set out broad parameters on our public send, spending within an RSR. Specific budget decisions are taken at that, but, uh, the budget process. And there is obviously a great deal of uncertainty still, even with the RSR, as to what our financial position would be. Um, I recognise the nature of members' debates. So I do not want this to descend into something overly political. Yeah. But the Independent Scottish Fiscal Commission have already stated on the record that we are operating in the context of a real terms 5.2% reduction in our budget. And that has unfortunately meant that we are challenged in how much support we can provide, as however much we would wish to do so. But I will touch on a matter pertaining to funding further on in my remarks. Scottish evidence gathered to support the growth of men's sheds is considerable and complements international research. For example, men's sheds provide positive views of ageing and later in life. Mr Sweeney touched on the um, importance of intergenerational solidarity, and I am very conscious that that is something men's shed can provide. And this evidence is, refer is referenced in Scottish Government funded the Shed Effect Study by Age Scotland. This highlighted 76 per cent of those surveyed agreed their physical health improved, and 79 per cent felt their mental health improved as a result of shed involvement. These benefits are also felt in the wider community, with savings to our health and social care systems. SMSA research highlighted for every £1 spent on West Hill Men's Shed, there was a return of £9.34 in terms of health and social care and community learning outcomes. There are also many other community projects which can achieve similar positive outcomes. In response to the pandemic and in recognition of the value of grassroots wellbeing projects, last year we launched our Communities Mental Health and Wellbeing Fund. Through this, we provided £21 million to over 1,800 local projects to deliver activities and programmes, with a further £15 million invested this year. The fund tackles the impacts of social isolation, loneliness and mental health inequalities on adults. And I am particularly pleased that it has also supported Men's Sheds Group across Scotland. And these included Port Leavenshed and Aberdeenshire, mentioned by Audrey Nicholl, which used funding to broaden services in response to increased numbers following the pandemic, and the Forfer Men's Shed, which used funding to build a new community allotment. The Communities Fund is one element of a range of work we are taking forward on supporting positive mental health and wellbeing in Scotland. And central to this is a refresh of our mental health strategy, alongside delivering effective services. We have an opportunity to place increasing emphasis on prevention and early intervention, and this will enable us to build on the creative project that people, communities and services have undertaken both before and during the pandemic. Presiding officer, in conscious, very conscious of time, so in concluding, I would like to return to a key point that Christine Graham made. And that is that that is, this is the third time that men's sheds have been debated in the Chamber, something we can all welcome. And I think we all recognise the important role that they play. So this is a debate that now needs to move on from sheds simply being great things, and that's something I'm confident we all agree on. Now we need to know who will join us in support of this great initiative. Partners such as local authorities, third sector, NHS, private sector and community workers alike can all play a role in developing funding and supporting the SMSA and the Men's Shed movement. Let's build on what has been achieved and take Men's Sheds in Scotland to the next level so that all our communities can benefit from them. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. That concludes the debate and I suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2 o'clock. <laughs>